Welcome, dear listeners, to Horror Den of Misfits. Story time. I've seen a skinwalker over by my partner's new apartment in Easton, Maryland. The complex is surrounded by protected land and undeveloped private property. Plenty of space for something to hide. I thought that I was seeing things because to my knowledge, it isn't Native American land but I could be wrong. The one I saw, it looked like a deer but the legs were wrong. Completely wrong. It's like its legs were on backwards with its knees and feet or hooves. And it made a weird noise that wasn't a noise that a deer make. It sounded like a human trying to speak. The one thing that was really weird is that it refused to step beyond the forest line into the parking lot I was in. Like it couldn't get into the full illumination of the street lamps in the parking lot. Yet there was enough light falling on the creature that I had no problem seeing it. It's like there was something physically stopping it from getting any closer to me. My lazy self never runs, even if I'm late for something, I don't run. That day, I ran as fast as I could with my fat self. When I looked back outside, it was still standing there, looking at me. I had an experience in the woods one night almost 10 years ago that got brought up recently, and I thought I'd share it here. I, female 16 at the time, snuck out of the house to go smoke weed in Lynn, Massachusetts woods at about 3 a.m. It's not a huge sector of woods, just a wee reservation smack dab in the middle of the Boston suburbs surrounding the local reservoir. I got to the entrance of the trail, parked my car, and made my way to the campsites, about a five-minute walk, where there were fire pits available. It was a popular smoking area for teenagers, and I was one of them. I set up to draw by the fire I had made and began to roll a joint. As I was rolling, I heard something on four legs come up from behind me. I didn't sweat it that much because where I'm from, the worst it could be was probably a coyote. But then, I heard it transition into two legs and walk with a bipedal gait. That confused me. Then everything went silent. No crickets, no birds, nothing. The only thing I could hear at that point was the crackling of the fire and my own breathing. Then I became really concerned, like something bad was about to happen. I called out, thinking maybe it was just a homeless dude working up the courage to ask me for some food or some money, since it was the city after all. I said hello and asked if anyone's there. Silence still, for about a minute. Everything was telling me to run, but I stayed because I thought if it was an animal trying to hunt me, I should stand my ground and make myself appear like I'm not worth the risk. Then whatever it was, it talked. It sounded almost like a parrot mimicking its owner's voice, and it asked to bum a light. Can I bum a light? It said. At first, I was relieved because at least I knew it wasn't an animal, but the way it spoke was truly uncanny. I said sure, but you have to come out where I can see you, you're giving me the creeps, dude. And then it asked again, and again. Three times. Then I was really freaked and knew something was really wrong. I then told it to F off and find someone else to ask if he was gonna be creepy about it. Then it ran off on all fours. You could hear all four feet hitting the ground as it ran away. The crickets came back, the night birds started to chirp again, and the air even felt warmer. That feeling of dread washed over me, and I knew I had to book it. I calmly packed all my stuff back up, put out the fire, and made my way back down the trail to my car. I wanted to run, but part of me still believed it was just a dude trying to get creepy with a 16-year-old girl in the woods by herself, and if I played it cool and acted like I wasn't scared, maybe he'd back off. My mother always taught me to make a scene in that scenario, and I was prepared to knife whatever came at me. I also thought maybe if it was an animal, I wouldn't trigger its hunting instincts if I just walked instead of ran. But man, every hair on the back of my neck was standing up. That feeling of being watched is definitely real. I finally saw my car about 200 feet ahead of me. I felt safe again, but I was still on alert. I felt secure enough to look behind me, and sure enough, 
Maybe 40 feet behind me was a male deer on its hind legs in the middle of the trail. I freaked. I've never heard of a skinwalker, never believed in anything like them at the time, never even knew what they were. But I knew something about that image was seriously wrong, and I lost my composure and booked it to my car. I made it back no problem and drove off before I could even turn my headlights on. To this day, I'm 24 about to turn 25. I have never been back to those woods, or really any woods for that matter. I'm deathly afraid of nature now, which sucks. The very idea of spending a night in them makes me so anxious I feel nauseous. It wasn't until years later when I fell into a YouTube rabbit hole in college, when you just pick one video suggested on your recommended page and let autoplay take you wherever, that I stumbled on a video that describes skinwalkers and alleged experiences people have had with them in the woods that I truly began to understand what I may have encountered that night. This shit is real. I don't know if they're as aggressive or dangerous as people make them out to be in the stories I've seen online because, in my experience, it seemed pretty curious and backed off when I confronted it still thinking it was just a creepy dude looking to score. But to this day, Thinking about it makes me shudder, and I get a pit in my stomach. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on this. I'd love to have this debunked even. I love those woods and sort of want it to just have been a weird dude. But I've heard some weird, very similar stories from the locals about those woods, and now I don't know what to think. I'm from the UK and know that this may be out of place here but I feel like there are some similarities to my story that others may get a kick out of. Full disclosure, I am a psychologist and a researcher. I am firmly agnostic on the notion of anything possibly supernatural existing, but when pressed for what I believe, I am resolutely atheistic. Could something be out there? I don't know. Do I believe something is out there? Given the evidence presented, I think there isn't. However, Being a good scientist means being honest about the experiences that don't fit within your rubric. I have psychological explanations for the following story, but they always feel incomplete. This takes place in 1991. I was lucky enough to have grown up at a time when people could think about buying a house in central London without having to be oligarchs or oil aristocracy. It was a two-floor Victorian flat with a large garden, just around the corner from the Natural History Museum, which is truly amazing when I look back on it. I was about six years old, and my father was increasingly traveling for work at this point, but that was nothing out of the ordinary. It was the middle of the day, my grandmother, mother, and older sister were downstairs in the kitchen, dining room which led to the garden. I don't know what spurred me on, but I went up the spiral staircase, running, as part of some game where I was enthusiastic and going full pelt. I remember feeling happy and breathlessly excited and then the sudden, jarring, emotional turn. I remember stopping dead in my tracks with a deep feeling of fear, like every fiber of my being was screaming that there was danger and something was off. Even writing this now, I can evoke that feeling, and my hair stands on end. I don't like recalling the memory and tell this story very rarely. At the top of the stairs, there was a landing between the living room and my parents' room. My parents' room had a wall of mirrors that contained closets. Standing in front of the old small TV, adjusting his bow tie was my dad. My dad, who absolutely couldn't be there, turns to me and gestures me over with one hand, while smiling at me. I was being called into the room, with a familiar smile and friendly gesture. At this point, My frozen apprehension broke, taken over by sheer terror, and I bolted down the stairs as fast as I could. I had always been hesitant about running down those stairs as fast as I could climb them as I had previously toppled down and knocked out my front tooth when I was younger, no such hesitation now. No such hesitation, I threw myself down and immediately sought out my very Irish grandmother who wore these long flowing dresses and clung onto the dress for dear life. I could tell she was a bit surprised. At the time, I didn't know how to express what I was feeling or what had happened, I just clung on for a while. My granny could tell that something was wrong but didn't press me for answers, 
which was an odd response given her character and how I was behaving. It would be a very long time before I could convey this story to anyone. At the time, I just felt I needed to be right on her to be safe. I don't recall if I ever told her, which I feel a little sad about upon reflection as our relationship didn't end well, and she passed away a few years ago. That image of the father thing calling me over still bothers me. Which is frustrating as, on its surface, the experience of seeing my father prepare to head out to work while I sat on the bed behind him is usually one that only brings a happy sense of nostalgia. On a side note, I was raised Catholic, but we didn't really take it too seriously. We grew up with some stories of the fey folk and folklore of Ireland, but again, nothing ever given a tremendous amount of weight. My grandmother deeply disliked religion and called herself an atheist, but was often referred to as a witch partly as a joke because she could be very domineering but also because there was a belief amongst my family members that she had a habit of predicting the future and having a sixth sense about things. I don't believe any of that myself but thought a few of you may value that detail. There is only one other story I have that borders on the otherworldly, but that one is probably not relevant here and doesn't carry any of the weight or dread this one does. I was biking through a local trail around 3 am and decided to stop for a smoke break in a very open area. I turned off my lights to enjoy the quiet and watch the stars. As soon as I lit my lighter, I heard a voice from behind me say, Hey, could I get a light? The voice came from just outside the clearing. I turned around with my lighter still lit and caught the outline of a figure, along with a reflection of something large, like glasses, on their face. The person asked again, could I get a light? Before adding, hey, what's your name? Curious about who they were and where they came from, I reached for my flashlight on the bike. But then they repeated, hey, what's your name? For some reason, that finally freaked me out. I grabbed the flashlight, turned it on, and saw nothing. There was not a single thing in sight. I quickly left the woods, trying not to dwell on what had happened and focusing on coming up with rational explanations. Initially, I didn't feel threatened until I reached for the flashlight. I've encountered a pack of coyotes before without seeing or hearing them, but this was different. It felt calculated and intelligent, staying just far enough away to keep me from seeing it clearly, yet close enough to pose a potential threat. It was intentionally disarming, and that aspect scared me the most. Later, I learned about old tales of spirits in the woods asking for your name at night, claiming they would possess you if you gave it to them. This knowledge made my experience even more unsettling. Despite this, it hasn't stopped me from engaging in risky activities late at night. However, I am now much more cautious and aware of my surroundings. So, this was last year around June. A really good friend and I pulled over here to Rock Hound. As we got closer to the mountain, I had the uneasy feeling that we were not alone or in an area where something more than human was living. As the sun was setting, we pulled out our flashlights, and I randomly told my friend, let me know if you see any glowing eyes. No idea why I said that, but I just did. I remember she gave me a quizzical look because I rarely say stuff like that. Anyway, we made our way up the hill, and that's when we found the carving on the rock of the face. No idea what it means, and I'm kicking myself for not taking a picture of the carved symbol above the face. It was a whirling log, seal newly, a sacred image representing a legend that was used in healing rituals, but I thought it was a swastika. Google the symbol. That's why I did not take the pic. At this point, it seemed to get really dark around us, thick like fog. I felt a heavy feeling weighing me down, and my friend tensed up, a look of fear on her face, and she said suddenly, we need to leave now, and started down the mountain. Not wanting to be left alone, I followed, and that's when we ran into these footprints. We don't remember them being there when we started. Some are old though but one looked very fresh. It looked like an animal track at the front, but the back of the footprint looks like the back heel of a human. 
I'm getting goosebumps writing this now, and let me tell you, my heart stopped in fear when I looked at these photos in the hotel room later that night, realizing what might have been watching us in the dark. It was confusing at first because the footprints were clustered together in the same area, but they were different sizes, so it makes me strongly feel it was shape-shifting in that spot for a reason. Plus, it was a full moon that night. It still gives me these powerful emotional feelings knowing we are not alone out there and these amazing creatures do exist and need our respect. That's the only reason I believe in my heart we are alive today to tell this story. Because we accidentally entered its domain, realized our mistake, and left quickly. Whatever was there was by no means threatening us, yet every fiber of our bodies was telling us we need to get out and get out now. The drive back on the dirt road was very tense. That thick darkness followed us a long way, the headlights of the car barely seemed to help, and that heavy feeling did not go away until we got back on the main highway. Plus the mind was terrified that a dark figure would appear in the rearview mirrors or lumber across the road. Would love to get your thoughts or answer any questions. The room was dimly lit, the only sources of light coming from the small lamp on the psychologist's desk and the city lights filtering through the window. I sat across from Dr. Hoffman, my Navy SEAL cap clutched in my hands, my gaze fixed on the floor. It had been weeks since I returned from that mission, but the memories were still fresh in my mind, haunting me like a relentless ghost. Joel, I know this is difficult, but I need you to tell me everything that happened, Dr. Hoffman's voice was calm, reassuring. Taking a deep breath, I began recounting the events that had unfolded in the remote village between Serbia and Bulgaria. Our mission was straightforward, locate the intel on a Russian spy who had stolen plans for a new weapon and return safely. We were a seasoned team, confident in our abilities to handle any situation. The chopper ride had been uneventful until we reached the dense woods of Serbia. A sudden malfunction caused our chopper to crash, leaving us stranded in unfamiliar territory. With our GPS and communication devices damaged, we had no choice but to rely on our training and use a compass to navigate towards the nearest village. Night had fallen by the time we reached the outskirts of the village. The darkness was suffocating, broken only by the faint glow of the moonlight filtering through the trees. That's when it happened, a guttural growl that sent shivers down my spine. At first, we dismissed it as the sounds of the wilderness, but then we heard it again, closer this time. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as we readied our weapons, scanning the darkness for any signs of movement. And then we saw it, a bipedal creature emerging from the shadows, its form resembling that of a massive dog, but with an unsettlingly humanoid stance. Its eyes glowed in the darkness, reflecting our flashlight beams like beacons of dread. I could see the glint of its sharp claws as it bared its teeth in a menacing snarl. We opened fire, the shots echoing through the silent woods as we fought for our lives against these dogman creatures. They were fast, agile, and seemed to move with an otherworldly grace. It was a battle unlike anything I had experienced before, a primal struggle for survival in the heart of the wilderness. Somehow, we managed to fend them off and escape deeper into the woods, using every ounce of our training to evade their relentless pursuit. Eventually, we stumbled upon the village we were seeking, retrieved the vital intel, and made our way back to safety. But even now, as I sit here recounting the encounter, doubts gnaw at the edges of my mind. Did we truly encounter those bipedal dogmen, or was it just a trick of the darkness, a manifestation of our fears? I can't shake the feeling that something terrifying lurks in those Serbian woods, something that defies rational explanation. Dr. Hoffman listened attentively, nodding occasionally as I spoke. When I finally fell silent, he leaned forward, his expression thoughtful. Joel, what you experienced out there was undoubtedly traumatic, but it's important to remember that our minds can play tricks on us, especially in high-stress situations. We'll work through this together, and in time, the truth will become clearer. I nodded, grateful for his words of reassurance. But deep down, 
I knew that some secrets were meant to remain hidden in the shadows, where even the bravest souls feared to tread. I live in a small lake town in East Tennessee with a population of about 5,000. The road I'm on is fairly busy due to its proximity to a children's hospital, resulting in frequent coming and going of people. Despite this activity, it doesn't feel particularly rural as I have neighbors within 50 feet on one side and 100 feet on the other. Throughout my life, I've had paranormal experiences. One such incident occurred when something in the house started mimicking my daughter's voice while she was asleep. I demanded that it leave, and thankfully, that was the end of that particular encounter. However, several months later, we began hearing violent pounding noises against the wall near the exterior of our house, which backs up against a mountain with vast acres of uninhabited woods. These pounding sounds occurred around five times, each separated by a few days. On one morning, while I was reading in bed, I heard something heavy jump on the roof and then walk around slowly, sounding as though a woman in stilettos was pacing. I quickly grabbed my phone and recorded the audio, initially assuming it was a deer that had somehow come down from the mountain and landed on my roof at speed. However, upon reflection, the commotion didn't quite match that of a deer, it seemed softer, more controlled, and deliberate. Shortly after this incident, I encountered roadkill in front of my house. Intrigued and unsettled by its appearance, I slowed down, backed up, and stared at it for a while. The creature had a flattened head and body, resembling a fawn, but its features were peculiar. It had rabbit-like feet instead of hooves and rounded, very thin, almost transparent mouse ears, albeit larger than those of a mouse. The legs were too long for a fox, and the ears didn't match any known local species. I shared images of the roadkill with an expert on animals in the area after spending hours researching online and examining the ears of various local species. He responded with the term skinwalker. This surprised me, especially coming from someone as rational and science-minded as he is. However, following his assessment, the violent knocks on our house ceased abruptly. These knocks were incredibly loud and forceful, sounding like wham-wham. During one of these knockings, my daughter raced up the stairs into my room, visibly terrified. We both heard the sounds while looking at each other, confirming that we were alone in the house. These disturbances consistently occurred towards the back of the house, where it meets the steep mountain. I live on Vancouver Island, in a small oceanside village called Bowser. One of my favorite pastimes is exploring the mountains and old overgrown abandoned logging roads in my small mini truck. It fits in places only a quad can go, so I really get into the back country far away from other people. One of my favorite trails to go on, is a very narrow and steep one which climbs up the slope of Mount Schofield where at the top is a magnificent view east over the ocean, island and coast mountains. In the fall of 2021, I was driving to the top of this trail to get some sunset views of the ocean and coast mountains. While I was enjoying the solitude of this rugged steep and twisting drive, I noticed off through the thick dark trees, about 70 feet away, a large dark shape paralleling me on my right. I figured it might be a black bear, or maybe even a grizzly bear, which have recently started to invade the island, or it could be a Roosevelt elk which inhabit the island, and I have at several times seen them in the area. The random thought also crossed my mind that what if it might be a Sasquatch, which are known to inhabit the island. That would be cool to see. But all I could determine is that it was large and dark. I was driving at between 5 and 10 kilometers per hour, so whatever it was had no problem keeping up with me. About halfway up this mountain I rounded a 100 degree turn to my right and started up a steep incline, the creature appeared out of the trees about 40 feet in front of me on the right. It looked like a huge wolf. There are a subspecies of grey wolf on the island, but this was three times their size and very dark. It looked to me, similar to the black timber wolves of northern British Columbia, but still larger. 
It stood there looking at me, and I at it, it reminded me of a giant black Tibetan massif on steroids, because of the thick, almost mane of hair around its head and shoulders. It was beautiful in its horror and ferociousness, and it stunk. Like dog urine and skunk cabbage through my open window. It was black with some gold and gray colors to its fur, its pointed ears were a good 5 to 6 inches long. I felt very bad vibes about it as its yellow eyes pierced right into me. I quickly rolled up my window. I felt naked and somewhat vulnerable. We have many cougars on the island and I most always have a gun with me when in the bush, but not today. I put the truck in first gear and started moving slowly forward to see if I could scare it off. It didn't move until I got to about 20 feet from it. Then the beast stood up on its hind legs and held onto a tree near it. I was more than shocked. I would estimate that it stood 8 feet tall at least. It was very well muscled with black claws at least 3 inches long. It growled and bared its huge fangs. The growl I could hear, and feel over the engine noise of my truck. It slowly and menacingly approached me, standing upright, growling and staring at me with eyes yellow as gold. About six feet away it dropped down on all fours, growling, staring at me over its left shoulder as it disappeared into the thick trees on the left side of the road. I estimated its muzzle was higher than the bottom of the windshield of my truck when it was on all fours, which is 48 inches off the ground. I have never heard of any animal like this on this island. After some online research I came across encounters with what is called a dogman, what people were describing fit what I saw. How it got here is a mystery. As I said, grizzly bears have recently invaded the island by swimming here across a very narrow strait between the island and the mainland, maybe these beasts have also done that, I would assume there is more than one to have swam that distance. I have hunted in the bush for over 55 years, defended myself from bears, cougars and other beasts. I have never been afraid, but this encounter left me shaken. The size of this beast, its powerful body and its menacing. Persona was nothing like I have ever encountered before. My 45, 70 Marlin rifle is now my constant companion when I go exploring in the back country, driving or walking. Leonard, Bowser, British Columbia, Canada. I grew up in a small Appalachian town in southern Pennsylvania, and seven years ago, a blue-eyed creature suddenly appeared on our property. Throughout my childhood on our property, the woods always felt off, not exactly evil or bad, but just not great during the day. However, as soon as the sun went down, you couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My dad used to tell us about a tall, black, shadowy silhouette or creature he would see regularly. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia, so my mom always dismissed it as a product of his condition, a story his brain made him believe he could actually see. However, I don't think that's what it was. He passed away seven years ago, roughly a month after his passing, I was letting the dogs out around 9.30 pm, their usual time. I used one of those flashlights that illuminate the area like it's daytime because you don't feel safe at night here. I was already on edge since there was no sound whatsoever, which rarely happens in our wooded area. While looking around, I noticed about 10 feet beyond the flashlight's range, an icy blue eye shine about 8 feet off the ground. When I made eye contact with this creature, I completely froze. I had never felt such primal fear before since that moment. Even with my powerful flashlight, I couldn't see anything other than a black, vague outline of it. I could only see those piercing blue eyes. As soon as I regained my composure, I glanced at the dogs and saw my dad's lab already in a defensive state, growling in the direction where I had seen the creature. The other dog had run back to the porch with me, shaking and crying by the door, hardly the behavior of a great protection dog, but I didn't blame him. I called for the lab a few times to get her back into the house with me and the other dog but she never took her eyes off the creature. Eventually, I had to grab her collar to bring her back inside. I never told my family about this encounter because of how they reacted when my dad would talk about it. Since then, 
I've had more encounters with this creature, and some of my friends have even been with me during one of these encounters. I know I'm not losing my mind, but I can't find any information about a creature with icy blue eyes. If anyone could help me, I'd really appreciate it. This event happened in the late 2000s with several witnesses. I was about 11 or 12 when it happened so I'm a little blurry on the details given that I'm almost 30 now but this memory will stay with me for as long as I live. Everything is true and as accurate as I can remember. It was a Saturday morning, my parents were divorced and my dad was dropping my sister and I off at our mom's house after spending a couple days with him. This morning was nothing out of the ordinary. My sister and I walked through the front door and we saw our mom with her then boyfriend and her best friend having breakfast in the kitchen. We put our stuff away in our rooms and joined them for breakfast. My mom's boyfriend's uncle happened to be visiting that morning. We were all eating at the table when his uncle came running inside, pale as a ghost. He stood in the front doorway not saying a single word and we were all worried. All he could say was you guys should come outside and look at what I found. So we obliged. We all walked outside towards the small tree that stood in front of the house. The tree was surrounded by our driveway but it had a small patch of grass around it. This patch of grass had a small area where nothing grew and our attention was directed to this particular spot. It had recently rained so it was very muddy. Plain as day we saw a footprint, or claw print rather. We measured the print and it was at least 12 inches long from what I can recall. But this wasn't what scared us. There were three very distinct claw marks at the top and one deep claw in the back. Each claw was roughly two to three inches embedded into the ground. Basically a chicken's foot combined with a human foot however much more larger and much bigger claws. We were perplexed and confused and downright scared. We then realized that there were a set of these prints walking up our driveway. Except these other prints were covered in blood. Whatever it was was walking and leaving behind a trail of bloody prints. We continued following them until we noticed that they stopped in the middle of the driveway, presumably as if the creature took flight. We tried to make sense of what we saw in our yard but we couldn't comprehend what we had witnessed. The strangest thing is that the tree and the grass quickly died shortly after. And to this day, we cannot get anything to grow in that small patch of now dirt. My guess is a rather large bird landed in our yard with some prey in its talons, but why would that have caused the tree and the grass to quickly die? My now stepfather is a professional gardener and he has made numerous attempts to fix this patch of dirt in our yard but has failed time and time again. Any thoughts on what it could have been? Today. I was walking around an LBL looking for places to camp. I've encountered some weird stuff out there before, but nothing as odd as what happened today. At one point, I thought I saw something move in a thicket. As I got closer, I saw what appeared to be a large bald eagle. However, the longer I looked at it, the more I thought it might actually be a person wearing a headdress. Later on, I saw it again further along the path, standing behind a snag. It seemed to have a dark or black body, but its face or head was white. I wasn't close enough to see details clearly, but the outline of the head resembled that of a harpy eagle's head. It could have been ears for all I know, as I had mistakenly left my glasses at home. The entity didn't seem aggressive or like it was going to follow me, it simply observed me from two different locations. I decided not to leave immediately when I first saw it because I was across a meadow with waist-high grass, and my destination was closer than my vehicle. Despite not feeling threatened, I was aware that I was being watched. On my way out, I took a picture of the snag in the thorn thicket. I planned to return and take measurements of the snag since the entity was standing behind it the last time I saw it. I am a resident of Indiana, about 30 minutes away from Indianapolis. This story is true, and I will try my absolute hardest to answer any questions with specific details. This all happened between June 2022 and September 2022. 
I know it was June because I have a video of my drunk friend Kyle at the place where this happened, promising to raid a Kona ice truck with me the next day. However, I lean more towards September because I remember it being kind of cold, and it was one of the last times we were going to be able to go out there that year. My friends Cy and Kyle were fishing at a parks river that was connected to Geist and invited me and my buddy Cody out to fish with them around 8.30pm we both weren't too keen on fishing, but we went just to chill because we all generally got along well. When we first arrived, they came up and said hi to us and gave a brief explanation of how the night had been so far. The gist was the fishing was shit, but the times were good. They also casually mentioned, in a joking manner, that they heard movement around them, and Kyle said something along the lines of don't worry Sam, I'll take it on with my bare hands. Now, it's been two years, but I'm like 99% sure he said some cocky remark along those lines. Kyle's the type of guy to say some shit like that. We all brushed it off and thought it was funny and ended up hanging around the campfire for a while. Now, some notable things that happened between now and when I first saw it were. We threw a dead battery from a light we had into the fire to see what would happen. I don't know if batteries make you see crazy shit, but you know, we did it. I don't think it explains us all seeing the same thing even if it had some effect on us. Cy drank a beer, and so did Kyle, but not me and Cody. We both are sober people. We didn't catch any fish, which was kind of lame. At around 10 PM, we all were kind of ready to go home because of how dark it had gotten and how bad the fishing was. We were about to start packing. Now, this park has a small trail, and at the end of it is a big open lake. I thought, hey, before we leave for good, we might as well walk to the lake and see it, then walk back to the cars. Everyone generally thought this was a good idea, and we were going to start walking once packed. They were about 80% done packing when I decided I'm gonna start ahead of them a little bit. So I walked about 300 feet down the trail until I saw some huge white thing move from the right side of the path to the left side pretty far down the trail. This honestly scared the shit out of me, but I had no flashlight, and in all honesty, I thought to myself, hey, that seemed creepy as f, but it might have been a deer, and I might just be crazy. So I walked back to the group, and since I was two years younger than Cy and Kyle, I didn't want to mention it lest I get called a pussy, which was pretty much a death sentence for my ego since at the time I was a sophomore. After they finished packing, we all got ready to walk and got a little further down on the trail than I did on my own. And then with a flashlight shined down the trail, we saw it. Now, this being two years ago, I don't remember everything but here's some stuff I do 100% know I saw. It walked on all fours. Its joints didn't move when it walked, it had no fur, only pale skin. It was thin, and you could see its spine protruding from its back the same way you can see someone's ribs when they're malnourished, and it had a short neck with an unidentifiable face. It probably stood about 5 to 6 feet. It walked very fast from one side to the other and genuinely felt evil. I just called Kyle and explained this post and asked him to do his best to describe it to me. The only thing that differed in his description was it stood on two legs and was a little taller. After calling Kyle, I called Cy and had him do the same. He gave a much deeper description. It walked on four legs but came up once and stood on the back too. It was kind of like the front two legs were arms that it could also walk on, he said the creature was long said the joints didn't move. He also said it had no feet, kind of a nub, which I 100% remember and agree with. Skin looked like it was stretched over its body to the point you could see bones. Like wearing a shirt that's way too small. After we saw it, we all stood baffled, frozen in fear. I asked, we all saw that right? And everyone said yes. Cody was behind us, so he didn't see the full thing but 100% agrees he saw a flash of white and agrees it happened. We immediately turned around and started back to the cars. Me and Cy were behind, looking at where we saw it, Kyle and Cody were looking forward, leading us back to where we parked. Once we got out of the wooded trail, Cy said he saw it for a second watching us leave, 
stating it must have gone into the woods about 30 feet and kept pace with us as we left. I remember getting into my car scared as F. Our immediate thought was that we must have seen a skinwalker, but I'm not so sure after all this time. We all 100% believe in what we saw, and after bringing it up to Cody, Kyle, and Sai, we know what happened happened. I live about 6 to 7 minutes away from where this happened and am honestly terrified that one day I'll see it again. I'm posting this in a few subreddits looking for answers and thoughts on it, and I'll be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you for reading my account of the story. I've lived in Alaska my whole life up until recently, and I have never experienced this before or again. I have no idea what it was that I saw, but here is my encounter with the unknown. During the 7th grade in November, I woke up around 2 to 3 in the morning because I was extremely thirsty. I got up and went downstairs to get a glass of water, which I did. After drinking the water, I put my cup in the sink and started walking back to the living room, which had the stairs up to my room. As I walked into the living room, I saw that I have three big windows and a half circle window above those three large rectangular windows. In that half circle window, practically touching the ceiling, I saw the silhouette of a person, but only the shoulders, neck, and head upside down, staring into the living room as if they were hanging off the roof with their feet looking into the window. I made eye contact with this thing, it had yellow eyes. I had never felt such fear in my life, and I still haven't felt this kind of fear. I literally froze, I couldn't move or do anything. I was completely frozen for what seemed like two minutes until I was able to recover and sprinted up the stairs. I immediately told my older brother, who, of course, did not believe me and shrugged it off. I stayed awake the whole night until the sun came up before I slept. I have no idea what it was that I saw. All I know is that I was definitely not lucid dreaming or having sleep paralysis because my brother still remembers when I ran into his room telling him what happened. I have never told this story to strangers before, but I would really like to know what it was that I might have seen. The closest thing I can think of would be a shadow person, but I'm not sure if they have yellow eyes or even if that's significant. I've had other strange occurrences in that house, but I think this story is already long enough. I am 20 years old now but when I was 4 I had a strange exorience that I think I have a lead on. Like I said this was in Garoja, down south, and I have been hearing about a cat man. I take these things with a grain of salt but this seemed too good. The events that led to the encounter are as follows. It was late at night and the power went out. There was no storms but I can't remember if there was any heavy wind or anything. I woke up out of a feeling of something being wrong and got scared. I tried to run to my parents' room but was stopped in the hallway by two cat-like figures. They were close to a human height and were pitch black, the hallway was very dark but I could still see them kind of dark, one of them grabbed my wrist tightly and when I fought back it suddenly froze and let go. I ran back to my room and hid for the rest of the night and never fell asleep. That and the fact I never forgot this and still have a fear of the dark because of it is the reason I am not convinced it was a dream. I have had other strange experiences that make me believe in the paranormal as well. I have looked for reasoning in things like the Bible due to my mom becoming very religious due to her own experiences in that house. I am not religious and despise organized religion but hey you just got to look everywhere Lamau. I did find some things about how demons freeze when they are confronted but when talking to others who have claimed to see demons their own depiction never matched mine. I recently started hearing things about a cat man. It's a stretch due to the fact that they are depicted as 9 feet tall however this one was human sized. There was also two and I take it by the name Catman that there is only one creature like this even if it is somehow real. I guess I just wanted to tell this story to people who might be interested as well as get some insight and ideas as to what it could have possibly been. I could feel its skin and its grip on me so I think it might not be of the supernatural variety and was more of a physical creature. 
I don't know if this group actually believes in cryptids or if it's just for the joke, but I have been thinking about this for 16 years now, so if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. Thanks. I saw something a couple of years ago when I was a host at a restaurant. While working there, I got really good at knowing who would be an asshole, who would be nice, and who would be weird. As soon as he entered the restaurant, I knew he was weird. His eyes stared straight forward. He didn't blink once, and his arms never moved an inch as he walked, even down the steps. But I wasn't scared until I saw his face. This was when we all wore masks in public spaces, or should have, at least, so I didn't see his face until he took it off. When I saw his full face, my heart dropped into my stomach. Now, for comparison, I used to sleep with a serrated knife under my pillow every night for years. I was almost trampled by a bison while hiking in Yellowstone. I was in a car crash on the side of a mountain, etc. But I have never ever felt fear or dread the way I did when I looked at his face. And I never want to feel that way ever again. It was like an automatic, instinctual response to seeing his face. He was tall and thin, very pale, with sunken eyes high and sharp cheekbones, bald, thin lips, and dark eyes. Simply describing it isn't enough. I felt completely frozen and breathless as I watched him walk up to the bar. He stood at the bar instead of sitting, his hands still unmoved from his sides. He was maybe five feet away from where I was standing. I watched the bartender talk to him and saw his response but couldn't hear it over the music. She put something into the computer and gave him a glass of water. He didn't touch it. He stood there for a moment, staring straight ahead and not moving. Then he abruptly turned and started toward the bathroom. But he wasn't wearing his mask this time. Normally, I would tell the customer, have to tell them to put on their mask, and I tried to do so, but I couldn't get the words out. I just wanted to disappear, get as far away from him as possible. It was really hard not to sprint in the other direction. I watched him all the way to the bathroom because I couldn't look away. And I felt immensely better when he was out of my sight. While I waited for him to return, I gave myself a pep talk. You have to tell him to put on his mask, you have to tell him, you have to tell him. I just kept repeating it in my head right up until he was close to me again, and I actually managed to say it. I managed to say, sir. Um, sir, you have to wear a mask, but he didn't acknowledge me or even react to what I was saying. He just walked right past me and out the door. When the door closed behind him, I felt like I could finally breathe again. It took a few moments to really recover from it, but once I did, I asked the bartender what she thought about him. I felt like I'd been going crazy by reacting to him the way I did because he actually didn't do anything to me, it was just a feeling. But what she told me totally validated everything I thought. She said that she felt terrified and extremely uncomfortable. She said that his voice was monotonous but very deep and his eyes were like an abyss. She told me that he only ordered a raw steak with no sauce, sides, or spices, but she didn't even send it to the kitchen. She said that she knew he'd leave. I felt paranoia for the next few days, like he was watching me but I couldn't find him. I think about this encounter all the time. I still worry that I'll see this thing again. And yes, I say thing because I don't think that he or it was a human being. I don't know what he or it was, and I can't find any information about what he is anywhere. The closest I've come is the real men in black, but this thing I saw wasn't in their clothing, and I don't know why one of those guys would be at a random, crappy restaurant. I thought they always wore the same stuff and I've never heard of them being undercover. I attend school in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and during the summer of 2023, I was at home late at night around 1 a.m., hanging out with my roommate at the time. We lived in a three-story home, and we were in the kitchen on the second floor when we heard a faint moaning sound. Initially, we thought it was coming from the neighbors through the walls, but it started to resemble the cry of a baby, not from next door but from outside, near our front door. 
we cautiously moved towards the stairs to get a better listen, and whatever was producing the sound began to escalate, banging heavily on the door like a large four-legged animal or a dog. We were thoroughly freaked out and unsure of what to do next. We retreated to the living room, but the noise persisted for about 30 minutes. Even after it became intermittent, we couldn't sleep due to our heightened anxiety. I lived on the first floor, so I was especially reluctant to venture down there. The commotion continued, so we decided to contact the non-emergency police number. As we were on the phone describing the situation, the person on the other end heard the noise in the background and confirmed it. They assured us they would send someone, but no assistance arrived. Frustrated and anxious, my roommate and I armed ourselves with kitchen knives and descended the stairs, with the scratching and banging sounds intensifying as we approached the door. I peered through the peephole but saw nothing outside. We returned upstairs, and the noise persisted for another 10 minutes before abruptly stopping. I eventually mustered the courage to go downstairs and went to bed peacefully. The next day, upon inspection, there was no sign of damage to the door or any evidence of what had transpired. To this day, we still ponder what it could have been, with some of us leaning towards the idea of it being a skinwalker, SW. However, we remain open to other interpretations such as a spirit or some other phenomenon. Any thoughts or insights on this experience would be greatly appreciated. I was staying in Holmrook, in the Lake District in Northern England. At roughly midnight the second night we were staying there, I went out to have a smoke on the road that led past the farm we were Airbnb-ing at. I was stood at a tee in the road, one side ran down toward the main road, where about a half mile away there was an inn and the other side of the road led up into the blackness of a forest that ran up the top of the hill the farm sat on. There was no civilization up that side of the road. No lights from houses, nothing but the blackness of trees. I'm aware there are sheep in the field straight ahead of me, only because I can sometimes hear their mewing off in the night. I stand in the road and I'm trying to get my very trusty Zippo I've had for almost 20 years to light. It won't. It's not a windy night, I just refilled it before coming on this trip. I try striking it about five times, and I suddenly get a wretched feeling in my gut, like someone is clearly looking at me. Watching me. It's coming from up the road, in the direction of the forest. Specifically, I can feel it's coming from the center of the road just as it leads into the forest, from right at its edge. I'm looking closely at that area, just to make sure nothing is there. I can't see anything, but the trees are thick enough, it's pitch black up to the very forest's edge. But the more I look, the clearer the feeling something is there looking back at me becomes overwhelming. I turned and walked back through the farm towards our car which was parked by the door of our stay. The light above the door is the only pool of light nearby and I stride straight toward it. As I approach its ring of safety, I feel a bit bolder, almost sheepish that I had felt off. Maybe I was just imagining it. But I still can't shake the feeling that whatever was watching me still isn't far away. I stand under the light, directly between the door and my car, and make bold enough to try and light up one more time. It's. Strikes out twice. But in my head I know, without a doubt, even in the very moment, that if it had lit, someone or thing would have been stood there next to me. I bolted inside slammed the door and jumped into bed. It's interesting reading some of these stories. It makes me think that if I had been able to get my Zippo to fire that I would have immediately heard a voice next to me, in the darkness of a moonless night in the lakes, do you have a light? When I was 11 or 12 years old, our entire class went on a camping trip. I'm not sure why, but we were all required to go hiking along the woods in the afternoon in pairs. Since I didn't have any friends, I ended up going by myself, trailing behind some others. It was winter, so it was getting pretty dark. I managed to stray from the group and got lost. I was crying a lot when suddenly, this nice and helpful person appeared and decided to assist me, guiding me back to the path leading to the camp. Because it was quite dark, I couldn't see his facial features clearly. He was extremely tall, 
and I distinctly remember seeing a glowing light, perhaps a headlamp, on his forehead. To this day, I swear I never heard footsteps crunching in the snow, instead, I heard something slithering or gliding. That fateful day, I was led out of the woods and will never forget my stroke of luck. After returning to camp, I excitedly shared what had happened and how I thought I had finally found a friend. Even now, I still wonder what that person or figure was doing alone in the woods. Please note that it wasn't one of the camp workers, as there were only a few workers available to assist our entire class, most of whom were on break. I apologize for this awkward memory rant, and I completely understand if people think this is unbelievable. A while back, my dad told me about an experience he had while driving on a country road with my uncle. They claimed to have seen a wolf-like creature with scarlet red eyes, standing at least seven feet tall. According to my dad, the creature leapt from one side of the road to the other. At first, I thought he was just trying to scare me, but now multiple people are sharing similar sightings of the creature, unaware of the story my dad told me. I'm posting this to seek answers about what it might be. I went outside around 2 am to take a walk around the block because I couldn't sleep. The first thing I noticed was this thing shaped like a head peering over the fence at me. It would have to be around 7 feet 6 inches tall if it was a person to clear the tall wooden fence like that. However, as soon as it happened, I was in disbelief and went to the fence line, saying, hell no, what the heck? There wasn't anything back there, so it was really weird. When I was 12, I was in a field surrounded by woodland with my friends. I then turned to my left where the woods are and saw this creature which was about 6 to 7 feet tall with black fur and a horse skull for its head. It passed between two trees but didn't come out the other side of the trees, it just passed in between them and disappeared. It didn't appear to have a gait and was almost gliding instead of walking and it was looking directly at me. I thought I was seeing things until I saw it again a second later passing between the trees again with its head turned directly towards me. I have no idea what it was. It didn't seem malicious and just looked curious. I live in England by the way. Anyone know what it might be? I've been encountering the same creature for over four years. I don't really know how to start this, and if this isn't the right subreddit for this, I would appreciate recommendations of where else to share my experiences, I have little knowledge of cryptids, and I'm just hoping for someone to maybe know what I'm talking about, or have experienced the same thing. A little over four years ago, Around January to February in 2020, around 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., I was on my school laptop watching a video when I started hearing something beyond unsettling. From my room, I could hear the sound of heavy paw steps coming from the kitchen, and some god-awful screaming sound that sounds like a dog in pain, just slowly creeping around my kitchen and dining room area for 15 minutes, doing nothing but screaming. Now, I have dogs, but I could tell from the sound of the paw steps that this wasn't one of mine, they sounded like they belonged to a way bigger dog than one of my Chihuahua or Pomeranian mixes, I would say around the size of a German Shepherd, but that's just a guess. All throughout 2020 to 2021, I would hear it walking through my house at night, it wouldn't show up at any certain time zone, but usually it was around 1am to 5am around the end of 2021, I moved states, and assumed I wouldn't have to deal with whatever this thing is anymore, and for a while I was right. For around a year I didn't hear it at all, I would have weird and uncomfortable experiences like my dog in my room randomly getting up to growl at my door, but nothing really besides that, until recently, I heard the same thing again, the same creature in my new house walking around downstairs and screaming, the only notable thing is it's sounding a little more quiet than it was before. I genuinely don't know what to do, every time I hear this thing I get this horrible feeling of dread, and I don't even know what it is besides that it sounds like it walks on all fours, has paws, and sounds like a dog, 
and I think it's starting to generally scare the hell out of my own dogs, who any time I hear it, come running to my room shaking next to me. Yesterday, around 10 to 11 p.m., my brother-in-law was letting my dogs out of their kennel. While he was walking towards the kennel, the power went off, and he noticed something tall and lanky with really long arms down to its knees and dark skin. It was kind of mimicking what he was doing on the other side of the fence. He says he couldn't look up at its face because all he felt was intense fear, so he ran back inside. After around 20 minutes, the power was back on, and the thing was gone. Can anybody help identify this thing? I live in the middle of a forest in Poland. I've never shared this story online, though I am curious to others who may have had a similar experience. I remember the night so vividly. Living in South London at the time, I was about 8 years old, playing Gran Turismo on PlayStation 2. Waiting for my dad to come home and join me. He would normally get home from work just after dark. I hear a knock on the door and I pause the game and walk out to the hallway. We had two front doors, in between the doors was an area to take your shoes off and a light above. The light above would cast a shadow onto the door of anyone standing in that little area. My dad had long hair, so I could clearly see the shadow of what looked like long hair, but another shadow next to him. I remember seeing the shadow bobbing up and down slightly, and was curious as I walked towards the door to open it. Assuming it is my dad coming home, I just open the door. Directly in my line of sight, I see the bones of a hand holding onto a wooden stick. In my peripheral I can see a basket that is empty, but floating and bobbing up and down, just below his waist level. He is wearing a purely black robe and I start looking from his hand to his face. The face was hooded, with absolute darkness, could not see a single thing under the hood. Just off to the side and above his head I could see the metal scythe blade. I stood there paralyzed, staring at the dark where the face would be. And he says in a very deep voice hello. I screamed and slammed the door shut and started running upstairs. My mom and siblings heard and came running down. I was crying, barely able to say a word but eventually told them I had seen the Grim Reaper. My eldest brother went out onto the street trying to look for anyone wearing a Grim Reaper costume. A few neighbors were out on the street as they heard me scream. No one saw anyone on the street walking around. For the next year, I had nightmares every night of the Grim Reaper murdering and cutting up my entire family and placing them in the bobbing basket, while I would hide under my blanket in the lounge room. This happened several years ago in West Texas near a preschool in an open farm field. My stepmother was driving us home on a dirt road by the open field I mentioned. While we were driving I saw a rabbit with antlers jumping across the field at a decent speed matching the speed of the car. I watched until it disappeared behind some bushes, never saw it again. Now the rabbit probably had something on its head while it was jumping across the field that made it appear to have antlers or my mind imagined it. As a kid my imagination was crazy, like literally. My mind made insects massive, literally thought jumbo grasshoppers were massive like the size of a small dog when in real life they're only big as the palm of your hand. Did I see a real jackalope? I live in a small town in Minnesota, right in the middle of the state. One summer evening, around 9 o'clock, my friend and I were riding electric bikes on the roads near my house. It was dark, but not completely dark yet since it was summer. The bikes had flashlights, allowing us to see somewhat clearly what was in front of us, mainly the road but not too far ahead. About 40 feet in front of us, we spotted a lanky, black figure. It appeared darker than the night sky at that moment. As soon as we saw it, we both quickly turned our bikes around and started racing back home. The figure began chasing us on foot, running almost straight up with its arms flailing above its head. At one point, it seemed to be gaining on us as we were going about 20 miles per hour. 
After chasing us for about 120 to 150 feet, it eventually gave up, and we managed to make it back home. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.